and welcome to my channel. My name is Andre Oscar and I'm a Norwegian guy who has been following Santos very closely for many years now. So close that I was even named the Santos official representative in Europe late last year. If you're new to my channel, I'd really appreciate if you dropped a like on this video and a comment down below. And of course, destroy that subscribe button! <laughs> Jokes aside though. Hey, wait, what? Um, what can are you? you talk about that new Juventus player? You know, uh, the, the guy from Santos that... Um, Caio, Caio Jorge, Caio George, Caio Giorgio or whatever. Caio George. Bro. Hey, you know the one. But okay. <laughs> I'll talk about it. Cheers, my this video. I'll be answering your questions regarding Juventus' most recent signing, the young and promising Brazilian striker, Caio Jorge. Oh, by the way, make sure to watch until the end of the video as I will be answering all the questions that I have received from Juventus fans over on my Twitter about Caio Jorge. Caio Jorge recently joined Juventus from my club Santos after his contract was coming to an end and it was impossible to renew it. So it all seemed like it would be a free transfer in January after the end of the contract. Santos, however, with the help of Caio Jorge, managed to get Juventus to pay a transfer fee of 3 million euros for the immediate transfer of the technical striker from Olinda. That payment will be paid in two payments, 1.5 million now and 1.5 million in 2022. There are also some bonuses that could be triggered if Caio Jorge completes some goals set in the contract. The first bonus is a 5% increase in the value if Juventus qualifies for the Champions League and Santos will also get a 5% of the value above 3 million euros of a future sale. Santos also managed to get in a clause that states that Santos will have priority if Caio Jorge is set for a loan or sale to a Brazilian club in the coming years. Caio Jorge signed a contract until 2026 with Juventus. Early on in this transfer saga, why does it always have to be these annoying transfer sagas when Santos players are involved? Really, why? I'm so tired of them. <laughs> anyway, early on it was Napoli who led the race and it was very very close to happening then all of a sudden AC Milan joined the battle and became the new favorite to sign the player. It was actually extremely close to happening then, one day out of the blue, Benfica had an offer accepted by Santos that was 3.5 million euro plus the two players Yoni and Gilberto. The problem was that this offer got accepted by the Santos president without even having spoken to Caio Jorge's agent, Giuliano Bertolucci, who had been given an August 1st deadline of presenting offers from the Italian clubs. This happened on the 26th of June. Bertolucci then got fed up with the Santos president and just accepted the pre-contract from Juventus within seriously within moments. At this point in time, Juventus had barely been mentioned since last summer when they, according to former Santos president Jose Carlos Perez, had a, as good as agreed on a 30 million euro transfer for the same player. Nice discount though, 30 million into 3 million in one year. Sucks for Santos, but hey. It is what it is now. When Bertolucci accepted the pre-contract, it was all set for Caio Jorge to join Juventus come January for free. But it eventually got reported that Juventus would submit a low offer of 1.5 million, but as we know now, Santos, with the help of Caio Jorge himself, managed to raise that amount to the aforementioned. There were many, many twists and turns in this saga. Instead of going through every step, I'll leave some links to some of my tweets covering it hour by hour. I must admit, I feel my reporting on this saga was very good, I'm very happy and proud of my sources and the information I was able to put out. I even got some nice and encouraging DMs from the legend himself, the GOAT of transfer journals, Fabrizio Romano on multiple occasions. That's huge dude, you're, you're, seriously, that's so huge, I'm so proud of that. But hey, feel free to follow my Twitter for all the latest regarding Santos Football Club and its never-ending production of high-end talent. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. I plan on doing more content in English moving forward with player profiles and information about young players with a future in European football. Now, with all the details about how Caio Jorge became a Jorge player out of the way, let's get into the real reason why you clicked on this video in the first place. Who is Caio Jorge and what can the fans of Juventus expect from this exciting 19-year-old striker? I have been following Caio Jorge since around 2015 
when he had a very good season for the under 13 side, scoring 16 goals in 19 matches. And when I moved to Santos in 2016, I went to a lot of first team and youth team trainings as I've always been passionate about scouting, youth development in football. And almost every Saturday for my time in Brazil, I woke up at 7 or 8 in the morning to walk to the club's training ground, the famous set the Hey Pelé where the youth teams are playing their matches. And in this period, I became a huge fan of some of these players who's later been dubbed the best Santos generation ever. And it was so much fun to be able to watch these players dominate every week. At times there were two or three people in the crowd, other times there were like 50, but I was always there. And let's look at a quick video I captured of Rodrigo, Lucas Lorenzo, Caio Jorge, Yuri Alberto, Ivonei, Sandri, Giovanni, uh, Kaique Rocha, Gustavo Cipriano, Lucas Senna, Pirani and some other great talent celebrating after having reached the final of the Paulista tournament back in 2016. <laughs> I'm so glad I filmed this, especially know how good these players have become today. But already back then, we knew that some of these kids were pretty special. Caio Jorge was born on the 24th of January 2002 in the town of Olinda, close to the popular holiday destination Recife in the northeast of Brazil, and he grew up in the neighborhood of Piedade. Caio is the son of former footballer and also attacker Jorge Ramos, who, according to Caio, was not a very good player, but he did score some great goals, according to Caio himself. Caio and his family traveled to Sao Paulo to travel out for Sao Paulo uh, when he was 9, and he did extremely well in the training match and he scored 6 goals, one of which was an incredible bicycle kick, but the club rejected him and they said he would never grow. Four years later, Caio's family saw how good he was and how much he wanted to become a footballer, so the family sold everything they had, his mother even sold her perfumes, her jewelry, his grandfather and a friend of his father all helped with money so that they could afford a two-week trip from northeast of Brazil to the coastal city of Santos. His father Jorge was hid away in the top of a tree so they could watch his son try out for Santos from the other side of the famous Wolf Santos training facility. After just five minutes after training, Caio Jorge was told to leave the pitch by the trainer and his heart dropped thinking he had done something wrong or that he would be cut immediately and lose out on his dream of becoming a pro footballer. What happened though was that the trainer asked if he wanted to come and live in Santos permanently as he was so pleased with what he had seen and his father still in the tree above had no idea what had happened and had to nervously watch the rest of the session thinking his son might have been cut. By the time Caio Jorge turned 14 he had already managed to raise some prominent eyebrows in Europe. Atletico Madrid had offered to sign him after impressing on his debut season having scored 17 goals in 16 matches for the under 11 side. However, his father convinced him that it would be better for his development to stay at Santos world famous Fabrica de Cracks and make history where players such as Pelé, Neymar, Giovanni and Robinho and Diego had done so before him. Caio had a rapid growth and quickly became a special footballer. And already by the age of 16, he got his first team debut for Santos on the 30th of September 2018 against Atletico Paranaense, if I, I remember correctly, in the Brazilian league. When he debuted for Santos, Caio Jorge was the sixth youngest player ever to have played for Santos, and he also became the youngest player to have scored five goals for Santos in the prestigious Copa Libertadores, that's like the Champions League equivalent uh, down in South America. And he did so aged just 18 years, 10 months and 23 days. The two next on the list, Diego Ribas, 19 years, 1 month and 16 days, and Neymar, 19 years, 3 months and 27 days. Later on, he also scored the fastest goals by a Brazilian in the Libertadores after just 12 seconds. Goal! 
To start out talking about player Caio Jorge and for us to get to know him better, I've spoken to one of Caio Jorge's former youth managers and actually the manager who first put Caio Jorge onto a grand scene, the prestigious Copian Copa São Paulo tournament back in January 2018 when Caio was just 15 years old. Remember, this is a tournament for under 20 players, so for an under 15 player to play there is very, very rare. So here is what Arau Alves said to me and Arau is also the son of Santos legend Manuel Maria. He used to play with Pele and he was also Pele's best friend, so Arau is actually Pele's godson. That, that's pretty neat. Anyways, let's watch this video. I'll be putting on some uh, some captions for you to understand what he said. Bom. Falar do Caio Jorge é algo que sempre me traz muita felicidade, muito orgulho. É um menino que eu conheci em 2013, quando chegou no Sub-11 do Santos. E desde lá eu venho acompanhando a sua trajetória. Sempre nos impressionou muito, uma aptidão muito grande de, de fazer gols. Sempre nos impressionou muito com, com movimentações, com ataques de espaços, né? E a gente no processo... Fomos trabalhando a equipe de base do Santos para que ele pudesse realmente estar evoluindo cada vez mais. E assim foi feito. É, me recordo muito no ano de 2017, o Caio Jorge tinha 15 anos e é, na preparação para a Copa São Paulo eu apostei nele, é, jogando contra jogadores de 19, 20 anos. Ele com apenas 15 anos participou da Copa São Paulo de futebol júnior de 2018, que é um dos campeonatos mais importantes é, da categoria né, aqui no Brasil. E fizemos uma campanha muito boa, com uma equipe muito jovem. E o Caio Jorge se tornou o jogador mais jovem é, do Santos Futebol Clube a fazer um gol nesse torneio, nessa competição, que é muito difícil, onde estão... É, estão é, mais de 100 equipes do Brasil. Depois dessa Copa São Paulo, as portas ficaram mais abertas para o Caio Jorge. Ele realmente é, atendeu todas as nossas expectativas. Vem aqui também desejar sucesso pelo menino que é, não só pelo atleta, mas pelo garoto que é. É um menino de muito caráter, de muita dedicação, tem uma família muito boa e que, que o acompanhou desde o seu início. Então, assim, eu desejo toda a sorte do mundo na Juventus, que é uma equipe fantástica que nós brasileiros aprendemos a admirar, assim como todo o futebol italiano. E eu espero que ele tenha muito sucesso, que ele seja muito feliz, que ele conquiste vários títulos né, e alcance todos os seus objetivos. E que ele tenha essa oportunidade de estar do lado do Cristiano Ronaldo, que é um exemplo de atleta, um jogador fantástico, que é um exemplo muito bom para todos os jovens, né? Que ele possa tirar um proveito muito grande disso e que ele seja feliz. Sorte ao Caio Jorge, sorte a Juventus. Big thanks to my good friend Arau Alves for sharing of his knowledge and his time coaching Caio Jorge. Arau is also the guy responsible for arranging that video message that I got from Pelé. What a great guy. Thank you bro, I miss you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you want to watch that video, go over to my Twitter, I'll put a link in the description down below and you can watch it, it's pinned on the top of my profile because you know, it's a video message from Pelé saying my name. Of course I'm gonna be flashing that, <laughs> you don't have that. I do. <laughs> In my opinion, Caio Jorge has the potential to become a world-class striker one day. He's fast, he's agile, he has a good shot, quick feet and a great technique. He's very very good at positioning and movement around and inside the box, very hard to defend against and he has in the past year or so built his physique so now he's strong as well without having lost his pace. He's got a very good right foot but his weak foot is not all that, definitely needs working on as he's certainly a team player, moving around, helping where it's needed, closing down spaces, tracking down balls. His work rate is a key all over. He tracks back, wins a lot of balls defensively for a striker and especially eager to win the ball back if he loses it. As part of his good movement is his willingness to drop deeper in the field to open up space. Another key aspect is his mentality. 
He is very focused on his football and always becoming better, focused on training and not the extravagant stuff as we know from many Brazilian players. He does have some funny TikToks, so you should go check those out. Caio Jorge is also ice cold 1v1 with goalkeepers. I remember seeing some reports last year where some newspapers were comparing him to Cristiano Ronaldo and I don't necessarily agree with that, but now that he will be mentored by the one and only himself, who knows if he can fit into that mold better. They pointed out his heading ability as the main reason for the comparison and Caio Jorge is, uh, he has indeed scored some headers, but as of now I wouldn't say that is one of his strengths, nor has it ever been through the youth divisions. He knows how to head the ball. But this is one area that I'd really like him to improve on. He got the physique, he's not small, but for now he's just 182 centimeters tall. But he's expected to grow, he's still young. Who knows if he could reach Cristiano Ronaldo's 187. We can only wait and see. I understand what they mean though, Christian is fast, he's technical, strong, moves all over the place. But I still feel that their games are pretty different still. Another area he must improve on and the big elephant in the room is his goal scoring. Yes, I know, 17 goals in 84 matches in the Brazilian league isn't enough to scare away any Serie A defenders even though he's just 19. But I'm not too bothered about this to be honest. Firstly, he has improved a lot in this department in the past year, being Santos top scorer with 8 goals and 3 assists in 28 matches, in which 20 was as a start. Compared to last season's tally of 9 goals in 48 matches, we see that this is a clear and steep sign of evolution. But most importantly, the goal scoring isn't Caio Jorge's main trait, even though it's a striker. Caio Jorge has often been compared to co-patriot Roberto Firmino by a lot of people who knows what they're talking about and I like that comparison as Kai was extremely hard to defend against he's always a threat on and off the ball you simply don't know where it's gonna pop up next and somebody has got to defend him if not he's gonna be a little one-on-one -on -one, as we spoke about earlier and by doing these runs he frees up a lot of space for his teammates to work in but keep in mind he's definitely not a bad finisher and he has scored some nice goals speaking of nice goals Let's have a quick look at the goal that Caio was involved in back in 2015 when he played on Santos under 13 side. This was in the tournament's final against rivals Corinthians, they won the match 4-0 and were crowned champions. But look at this, everything from the build up to the double bicycle kick finished by Caio, Jorge and Ivone, it's simply brilliant. Ivone is the one that actually scores the goal but it's a double bicycle kick goal in my book. It's also very good to see that Deco, our good friends here on the channel, is involved in the goal as well. Let's quickly go through his numbers at youth level before we continue. I did a lot of work to find out this actually. I found some journalists that had written about it online earlier, but as I went deeper into it, I found out that these numbers were mostly wrong. So actually I put a good amount of hours uh, of research into these numbers, so I hope you will enjoy them. In 2013, his first year in Santos, Caio Jorge scored 17 goals in 16 matches, that was for the under 11 side. Caio was the top scorer of the under 11 championship this season with 17 goals, the next player on the list had 12. That's how you raise eyebrows in Europe. 2014, he didn't score any goals and I can't seem to find any data available from that year on Caio Jorge and I'm not really sure why. I can only assume it was due to injury or perhaps a situation with Atletico Madrid, who, who knows. I, I don't. In 2015, Caio scored 16 goals in 19 matches for the under 13 side. This is very good at under 13 level and he was actually the tournament's top scorer again with his 16 goals and they were crowned champions after beating rivals Corinthians 4-0 in the final of the video we saw earlier with uh, that double bicycle kick. In 2016, when I lived in Santos and I watched these players week in and week out, Kai only scored 2 goals in 10 matches for the under 15 side. This was not a very good season for him, but he was just moved to the under 15s and he was of the younger players. So there were a lot of matches off the bench among these matches. In 2017, he returned on fire. Kai scored 22 goals in just 13 matches for the under 15 side, and this is where the hype started growing. 
22 goals in 13 matches at under 15. Not enough to be top scorer in the tournament, but he was Santos' top scorer. One goal ahead of another big promise at Santos at the moment, Marcos Leonardo, who I'll definitely be talking more about on this channel later. He also scored four goals in three matches at the under 15 South American Championship for Brazil. One goal against Croatia, one against Bolivia, then two against bitter rivals Argentina. 2018, Caio scored 10 goals in 15 games for the under-17 side, also one goal in the Brazilian under-17 cup and one goal in the aforementioned Copinha, Copa São Paulo, which is the uh, most famous and prestigious youth tournament in the world. And our friend from the video earlier, Arau Alves, let Caio Jorge debut in the tournament at just 15, even though it's an under-20 tournament. Caio still managed to get a goal even though he was playing against much older and stronger opponents. That's very, very impressive. 2019 was the year he was promoted to the professional team of Santos, so I have divided the stats. For the under 20s, he didn't score any goals in four matches, but he did score five goals in seven matches of the under 17 World Championship, and he was Brazil's top scorer in the tournament which they did win and he also won the bronze boot award. If I'm not mistaken, he did score the same amount of the guy which won the silver boot, but uh, that guy had done it in less matches. On senior level in 2019, Caio Jorge played seven matches, but he didn't score any goals. There's not much to say about this really. It's the debut season, he's young, professional level. He did actually get some good minutes, uh, even playing some matches as a starter, but remember he was just 17. In 2020, he scored 9 goals in 48 matches as a pro, but an incredible 5 goals in 12 Copa Libertadores matches, and he was Santos' top scorer in the prestigious tournament. Caio Jorge scored 4 goals in 28 appearances in the Brazilian league that year. In 2021, Caio Jorge has improved a lot and he has scored 8 goals in just 28 matches, but he scored just 1 goal in 7 Libertadores appearances, and two goals in two matches in the Copa Sudamericana, which naturally would be the Europa League equivalent in South America. His last season for Santos definitely still improving and now he's ready to take on the challenge of European football at Juventus and I'm so excited for that, you should be as well. In total, he has scored 17 goals in 84 matches as a professional player. And now, let's get into the Q&A section of this video. I've asked my followers over on Twitter for questions about Caio Jorge, so let's see what we have got here. Around Juventus has sent in quite a few questions actually, so let's start with those. Firstly, he wants to know how good Caio's weak foot is and um... Well, his strong foot is the right one and luckily he's really good with that because his weaker foot, it's not all that just yet. It's definitely not the worst I've seen, but I want to see him improve it and uh, yeah, let's see. Next question, have there been episodes of tantrums professional life wise? Uh, from the top of my head, I can't recall any situations where he has completely lost it. On the pitch, he's definitely not afraid to tell the ref or the opponents what he thinks, but nothing out of the ordinary. And there haven't been many problems off the pitch either other than this contract renewal situation, but it was all very calm. The only time he did something out of the ordinary was when a journalist last October wrote that Santos would face difficulties renewing with Caio, whereto he responded on Twitter with, what difficulties, where are you taking these news from? Needless to say now, he did not renew that contract and that's now why he plays for Juventus and not for Santos. I don't know who was right there but but yeah in, in general he's a very focused guy and he's got his head in the right place and and that's so important for a young player going to Europe next question has he always been a striker and yes Caio George has always primarily been a striker but there has been matches where he has played on the wings but definitely not where he should he should be playing as a roaming striker he can play very well down the flanks if he suddenly finds himself wander off though and there has been goals of his started from out wide next question does he provide better performances as a starter or as a substitute and in my opinion at Santos, I definitely prefer him as a starter every day of the week. He's got a good engine and as we talked about, he's roaming around, dropping deep, he's a constant threat to the opposition 
I'd like him to play as much as possible, but in Juventus surely he will be used as a squad player coming off the bench to begin with, so let's see how it does at that, this new stage. And around Juventus last question, can you confirm that he has studied Italian in the last months? And yes, Caio Giorgi has been studying Italian for quite some time already and he should arrive Tutto pronto to adapt into his new life in Torino. Please, please don't don't cancel me though. That was a uh, that was just a, a parody. Don't 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 cancel me, please. Don't. Ser seriously, don't don't. Lastly, Joachim MB wants to know what Brazilian footballer I would compare him to. And as I said earlier on in the video, that must be Roberto Firmino. It's definitely not a Firmino blueprint, but if I must compare, the likenesses to Firmino are obvious. Even though I'd say Caio has the potential to become a better goal scoring striker, I'd also like to mix in a bit of Gabriel Barbosa, also from Santos, Gabigol, who unfortunately was a flop in Europe. Been talking a bit about this for years, he went way too soon, didn't have his head with him, but Caio does seem to have the right mindset to, to succeed in Europe and I feel it's like a combination maybe with, with Firmino, Gabagol, it, it's something in between there. But most importantly, as I've said many times, I never like this comparison, new Neymar, new this, new that. Caio Jorge is the new Caio Jorge, he's his own player exactly as I said Rodrigo is the new Rodrigo, Rodrigo is Rodrigo. We, we should stop with these big comparisons of these youth players as it can definitely be hard to cope with for some of them. I have much more I'd like to share about Caio Giorgi. As you can tell I'm pretty ecstatic about these Suns players going to Europe but get in touch with me over on my Twitter if you have any questions about Caio Giorgi, anything Santos, Brazilian football related, I don't know, just follow me on Twitter, send me a message let's let's continue the conversation there oh wow <laughs> i think this video is long enough now generally thought it'd be a five minute video but hey when i go i go but i hope that you have enjoyed this video if so please leave a like on the video leave a comment or a question to me down below in the comment section i will be answering every single one I'd really really like if you could subscribe to my channel, it helps me a lot to grow. And again, a big and massive thanks to you for having watched this video. And an even bigger thank you if you actually watched the whole thing, because it was quite long. But, but hey, that's all I have for you today. Until the next video, let's do this as I normally do in Portuguese, this is gonna be awkward, but hey, NURU! Wait, 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 wait. These are actual Neymar match one boots, by the way. So make sure you subscribe if you want to watch the rest of my collection one day. I'll definitely be making a video on that on all these match one. Neymar, Santos, Gabigol, Rodrigo, who knows, Pele. I got a lot of stuff there. So make sure to subscribe to see more of that. Peace.